Welcome to the Love KC prayer call where we join Jesus where he's already at work. I'm Jade Van Slyke and Gary Kendall and I are honored today to have Olivia Williamson. She is the director at Claim Your Campus. So join me in welcoming Olivia to the prayer call. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're we're glad to have you, Olivia. Yes, thank you so much for just your time and your presence and just for your voice um, in Kansas City. We are just grateful. Um, for who you are and who God made you to be and for your time today to be on um, the prayer call. I'd love just for you just to tell a little bit about um, your role with Claim Your Campus and um, just kind of the yes on your heart that you've had for Kansas City. Yeah, so I started working with Claim Your Campus back in 2019, um, was doing mobilization and was traveling back and forth actually to Kansas City. Um, we were planning on doing an event here. And so I was here all the time meeting pastors, connecting at gatherings and um, table events and roundtable moments. And um, God really gripped my heart, one, for this city um, and two, for young people. And so uh, really, I... I inherited this vision. It wasn't given to me at first, but I I feel so called and drawn to the vision of Claim Your Campus, which is to see student-led prayer in every school um, and every middle and high school specifically. So students who are 12, 13, or 16, or 17. So we're calling young ones to intercede on behalf behalf of their campus. And um, I felt called to move here to Kansas City. The Lord made it so clear when I started visiting and he said to me, you need to be here for what's going to happen. And uh, in, through some really cool series of events, God cool. led me here. And now I love that our ministry gets to function out of the center and the heart of our country. Mm. Yeah. It's exciting. I've heard you tell that story, Olivia. I mean, if you want, you could tell it again. It probably never gets old. It's so cool how God, how God did that for you. Yeah. So I was at a pastor gathering. Um, it was actually for the send. So we were at um, Arrowhead Stadium and we were praying and the Holy Spirit just met us in a powerful way in that room. And I remember God saying, you need to be here for what's going to happen. I did not know people here. Um, I was new. I was just traveling through. And I said, God, if if I need to be here, I want you to introduce me to a family, to a couple that would open up their home and let me live with them because I don't know people here. And five minutes later after the meeting, um, I met a couple who literally opened up their home to me and are still dear friends of mine to this day. And so that was amazing. And then um, the next day was the day that I met my husband. So, uh, I mean, I didn't know he was my husband then, but I met him the next day and uh and because we got married, he is a youth pastor around this area. And so I moved out this way when we got married and it just worked out perfectly where we're both now serving here. And I'm so thankful for how God brought me here. Oh, That's I beautiful. That. I never get tired of hearing stories like that. Yeah. Me too. How neat just to see God, you know, at work and we know God's at work, you know, but just to hear stories and examples of ways that he is alive and active um, in each other's lives is truly encouraging and just so inspiring. And I've heard that before and it just still got me chills. I mean, <laughs> and I know that our listeners are hearing it this week. Yeah. Just feel the same way, just to know um, and just see your faithfulness in that and um, ability to listen and just follow, you know, the Holy Spirit's leading in our life um, is what we want, you know, for each of our kids too. Um, and um, Kansas City to have that same desire um, to follow fast after Jesus and where he would lead them and guide them um, to where they would be fruitful and be able to um, live a whole um, life. Um, so thanks for your willingness to share um, that with us. And um, so on the prayer call, we'd just like to ask a few questions just to kind of get to the heart of of some um, people in Kansas City. We hope that these calls will encourage our listeners um, in their prayer life and um, just to motivate um, them um, to prayer. And really prayer is just a conversation with um, with the Holy Spirit. And so we um, like to do these just to be able to model um, prayer for our listeners. And so I know that you do have an uh, awesome um, prayer life and want to model that for um, others too. So thanks for being on today. And so that first question is, what's at the top of your prayer list? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things, but 
One thing um, I'm asking God for, which is huge, mm-hmm. is one million students praying. And I pray for that almost every day. And someone challenged me in my life to not just pray things that, um, you know, to pray God-sized prayers, you know, because he could do it. Like, I can't wrap my mind yeah. around that, but I ask him for it because I know he can. And so that's something that's at the top of my list. Um, we've, we've been praying for that as a ministry for years and years. And I said, I, I want to be personally praying for that every day. So that's at the top of my list. Mm. Well, I'd love to join you in praying for that. It is a big, a big number. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many students are in Kansas City, but I know there's you know, more than a million, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to think of kids that are praying, you know, and joining together in prayer is just really um, an awesome thing to think about and how that can transform our schools and honestly, our city um, for Jesus in ways that um, that we haven't seen before, you know, and it is one of those things that can't happen without God. Um, but we do know that with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's join together and um, pray for this Um, so Father we do just thank you for Olivia Lord we thank you for the ways that she hears from you and we thank you for the ways that she obeys you Lord and we do just pray this really big prayer Lord um, for a million um, kids in Kansas City to be praying um, to you um, in you alone Lord Um, we just pray that you would fix our eyes on on you um, Lord and We know that we can't um, do anything without you, Lord, but with you, all things are possible, Father. And so we just pray um, that this really big prayer um, would come to fruition here in Kansas City, Lord. We pray that your kingdom would come in Kansas City, Lord, and in mighty ways, um, Lord. We pray that you would reveal um, yourself to us in mighty ways, um, Lord. Just help us to trust you more and more each day. And I just pray that we would follow fast after you. And you alone, Lord, just help us to seek you and find you. Jesus, I pray um, for our kids in Kansas City that they um, would just know your voice and that they would follow you. We just thank you um, for Olivia and her desire to um, see this happen here in Kansas City. And we just pray for more to join in this mission and vision um, to reach um, Kansas City for you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Olivia, when you say a million, are you saying a million kids in Kansas City or a million across the country? So I know that your ministry stretches across the country. Yeah, we are nationwide. So that's my prayer nationwide, that there would be prayer warriors in every community and every school. So, yeah, I think of the million. But um, what's really cool is we're doing something called the Prayer Walk Project. Just a quick shameless plug because I got some prayer people here. Um, we are calling people in capital cities to prayer walk middle and high schools this year. Um, and so that's on our website. I would love if anyone w- would want to prayer walk in capital cities. But what's really cool is in those schools alone, there's a million middle and high school students just in our capital cities. And we're going to pray for them this year. We're going to pray for a million students. And now we're praying that a million students would be praying. You know, we're going to pray yeah. for them. But that's that's what we've been praying for. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. I work with Kathy Branzell on the National Day of Prayer and the coordinator for Kansas. So um, one of her questions is, you know, what's happening in Topeka? So I live in Kansas City, so I'm depending on people in Topeka to tell me what's going on. So I'm contacting the contacts I have there. And then they're asking me, have you ever heard of a woman named Olivia Williamson? <laughs> I know who she is, yes. They said, well, we're trying to build a prayer wall in Topeka. And they start telling me the whole thing you just you just said. Yeah. And I said, that's so cool that that's happening. I'm really, really glad about that. Awesome. So the second question we ask, it almost sounds like the one you've already answered. But if you have something bigger, it'll probably blow my mind. <laughs> but, you know, what's a prayer so big that it would take a God size to answer? Um, and before I, I answer that, I want to compliment you on something that one of the things that, that I try to challenge myself on, and it sounds like you've done the same, is don't don't dumb down big numbers just because there's something we can't wrap our arms around. You know, we, we should have God sized numbers because we have a we have a big god 
mm-hmm. and nothing is impossible for him. But also his the way he thinks it works should never be limited to just what we can conceive or pray for. So we pray for whatever he puts on our heart to pray, whether we know how to do it or not. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you've already done that. But what, what what's your great big hairy thing that you want God to do? Yeah, I think... Um, so where we probably pray for often, um, and that's revival, we pray for revival in Kansas city and also just pray for unity mm-hmm. in Kansas city and, and beyond, but just unity right. between churches and ministries. Cause that feels, that feels bigger to me than a million people praying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that feels very impossible sometimes, but we right. certainly are the impossible. And so I pray a lot for unity um, across the board with Christians that we would see that. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, that is beautiful. And that is a big prayer. I mean, think about all the different things that have divided us, you know, whether it's politics or it's race or uh, just um, economic kinds of things that are all at work in our city. Uh, the reg- regional things, we have a state line that divides our city. We have a river that divides our city. You know, it's very easy to be divided. So I'd love to pray with you about, about those things. And I want to invite all of our listeners to pray. We're praying here on this call, but wherever you're watching from, your phone or your screen or wherever you are, um, even if you're watching weeks later or a year later, you know, please please keep praying this prayer with us. So let's go to the Father now. Jesus, we thank you that the word tells us that you're always at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for us. And what a tremendous thought that the creator of the universe, the Savior who died on the cross, defeated death and the enemy and rose from the dead, is praying for us. Lord, forgive us for the times when we just don't know how we're going to get something done or we feel defeated because uh, we've had one more round of uh, the enemy rebuffing our plans. So, Lord, energize your people today with faith. Lord, just help your spirit to rise up mightily within us to claim what you've already purchased. You died for us, you poured out your blood. Lord, that we might win these battles, so we would be the the victors, not the victims. Lord, we believe we can change the spiritual climate in a city by the way that we pray and by the way that we live. And so, Lord, we do pray for revival. We pray that it would start. Lord, in, in a, so we could draw a circle on the sidewalk, stand at it and say, start a revival here, Lord, start in me. And then we pray, Lord, it is spread every part of our city. We thank you for ways that you credit and thanks for that, Lord. It's encouraging. But we also want to see it here. We want to see revival here, Lord, in Kansas City. And we know that part of that really begins with the Philippians 2 kind of humility, that we will humble ourselves and put you first and put others first. And then as we were unified, Lord, in John 17, unity, the 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 right kind of conditions are there for revival to take place. So help us to do our part, even while we ask you to do your part. We acknowledge, Lord, there's things we can't do. We can't make the Holy Spirit move. We can't make revival happen. But you're ready. You tell us you're ready. You say, if my people who are called by my name, we'll, we'll pray and hum- humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Um, then, Lord, that you will move. And so this is our prayer that we will do our part, Lord, and that you will just wonderfully surprise us with the overwhelming work of, of revival and unity. And we pray that it would be sustained over time, Lord, not something that happens here and there once in a while, but something that is a growing reality that we live and walk in, in it, Lord. I know it would bless our city. I think it would also bless our country and our nation. So we pray for that. We look forward to seeing the way you will move. And we will give ourselves to it, Lord. We pledge ourselves to the task. Uh, but thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the prayer Olivia is praying that we now pray with her. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Gary. It's definitely a prayer that, and a verse that's near and dear to our hearts at Love KC. We definitely yeah. identify that and do just believe um, in just unity, you know, in Kansas City and how we just see that that the relational equity is so important, you know, in moving forward. Absolutely. And, and um, just in this next stage of just life um, for us to really reach people for the Lord, that that's through relationships. And we often say we move at the speed of relationships and that is through 
you know, just, you know, people coming to know Jesus through, you know, through a friend. And um, I think that that is, um, you know, just so important. And that takes, you know, people kind of surrendering and um, being willing to, you know, work together in new ways. So, yeah, love that. And a prayer that's on each and our hearts too. And so we do just ask our listeners, if that's on your heart too, just to um, pray and connect, you know, with us, we'd love to partner um, with you and what you're doing um, here in Kansas City as well. Um, so Olivia, our last question um, is always the same and um, it's, what are you learning? Um, so we'd love just to hear what the Lord is teaching you um, in this season. Yeah. So I work with middle and high schoolers all over the nation. I love hearing their stories and getting to know them. And when we call them to be a part of what we do, I just keep finding, um, it feels like we're reaching a brand new generation after COVID hit the world. And uh, they could probably care less about hype and lights and the big stage and the big events. I, I, I think people still love concerts and stuff like that, but when it comes to um, inviting them into the faith, inviting them to know Jesus, they just want to be known and they want to, they want to be seen. And it's, it's the simple things I think that are really drawing this generation in to, to hear the gospel. It's, it's simple and it's very relational. Um, they they want to know you're real. They want to know that you hear them. They want a place to belong. And that word belonging is um, I'm leaning into that word right now. I'm praying into that a ton for this generation and for young people. Um, Gen Alpha is going to be in middle school next year. So just trying to wrap my mind around that. A whole new generation is about to enter middle school. And uh, it's it's just amazing to to interact with young people and to see. Um, I mean, they don't care about what you know until, you know, you care about them. I screwed up that saying, but you know what I mean? Like they they want to know that you hear them, listen to them, care for them. And that's not anything new. But that's just what I'm seeing in a new light. Um, We've tried to do events and big flashy things for a long time. And we just know it's grassroots movements. It's relational and it's loving people. And that's why sharing faith with a friend is so important and um, is working because that's what people want. That's what young people want. And so um, that's what I'm learning. They just want to belong and they want a place where they can be seen and be known. Um, And that's who Jesus is. We know that. But um, I think that's a way the church can embody Christ right now is to to see and know these young people who want a place. I definitely agree with you. And I am a mom of two high schoolers myself. And and we do just see, you know, a lot of good, you know, in this in the schools. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of hard um, too but there is a lot of good, you know, and I do feel like, you know, the Lord is saying like, look up child, you know, like uh, listen and just see, you know, the good that I'm doing, you know, here in um, the city and in our nation. Um, and we do want more, you know, um, more kids to be able to just hear and just know, you know, who Jesus is. And so I am, um, I do want to ask you to pray, but before I do that, I would just love um, to have you, um, maybe some of our listeners um, who are listening um today or another day, um, do are interested in maybe um, getting connected. And um, I feel like we'd be amiss to have you on and not um, have a way for people to um, connect with you or maybe to um, have their kids even connect with you about starting something. Because what I love about Claim Your Campus um, is that it's um, really run by students. And I feel like um, just like earning the right to be heard. I think having that be from a, a peer and a mentor, um, somebody in the student is the um, more sustainable in a lot of ways than having it. I'm sure there, you know, the, you have to have sponsors and stuff from the school, I'm sure, but still to be able to have student leaders really makes a huge difference um, in a group being successful or not, um, from what I've seen personally um, in working with schools. Um, but would just love for you to share a little bit about that and how um, a Claim Your Campus group is started. Yeah. So any adults that are watching um, who are interested in this one, we'd love for you to pray for us. So go to our website, learn more about us. Um, There's some really cool ways you can get involved. One of those is the Prayer Walk Project. So this September 2023, we're calling people to Prayer Walk Capital Cities. If you are in Kansas and you want to go to Topeka or um, Missouri's capital. I can't remember what it is. And if you want to go and prayer walk, um, go to our website. It's claimyourcampus.com. 
And then if you want to go specifically to that page, just slash prayer walk project. That's how you can find it. Um, and then if you're in Kansas City, if you're local, um, we would love for you to join us. Um, prayer walk with us on May 6th. So um, we are inviting the whole city to prayer walk 100 schools together. Um, and that's, you're not prayer walking every single one yourself, but uh, <laughs> collectively together, we're going to prayer walk 100 schools. And so um, if you also go to our website, you will see a flyer. It says prayer walk KC schools. And we have a group you can sign up for if you want to show up for an hour, a couple hours, or for a whole day. Um, you can sign up for a group that's near you to pray or prayer walk with other people. Um, so those are for adults and families and caring adults that just want to get involved. Um, but for students, there's three simple steps. And if you know students in your life, pass this along. One, they download the Claim Your Campus app. That simple. You get the app. We have a free prayer guide content with video testimonies. You can see a map of where students are praying all over the nation. There's prayer challenges. Um, there's just so many different cool things to help you interact with your prayer life and to grow in it. So step one, download the Claim Your Campus app. Step two, invite two friends. So maybe you go to a middle or high school, maybe you go to a co-op, um, maybe you meet before you group to pray with your friends, invite two of them to show up. If you have more friends, that's great. Invite them all. But start with two if that's where you need to start and meet weekly to pray. That's step three. Um, show up weekly and just pray. You can use the app. The app is an amazing guide to do that. That's why we created it. And so I just encourage any students to get that app. It's so encouraging. Um, I have students who wake up in the morning and they do a 21 day prayer challenge um, to start a habit of praying in their life. And so they wake up and they read through the guide and it has scripture and prayer points and how to pray specifically for our friends that don't know Jesus. And so um, we're not just calling a generation to pray. Um, we're teaching them how to pray as well. So that's the easy answer I have. That was kind of a long answer, but easy answer for how adults and students can get involved with Claim Your Campus. Perfect. Excellent. Well, that's great. Love it. Yeah, well, I definitely am excited um, about that and we'll be um, sharing that as well. Um, so um, to close this, Livia, I'd love for you just to pray um, for yourself and then others that are learning um, similar things as you. Yeah, let's pray. Jesus, we love you and thank you so much for loving us first. Lord, I, I pray for a generation that wants to be known, wants to be heard. Lord, so many have been hurt because they are not heard. They don't feel like they have a place to belong, but we know that you um, have open arms for those who are seeking you. And so I pray that you would equip us, equip the church, equip our ministries, um, equip our leaders and our parents and our students to love those who feel like they don't belong. You left the 99 to go find the one. And I pray that we would have that same heart for those who feel lost and hopeless. Show us how to see them, open our eyes, open our ears. And Lord, we just pray um, for a great harvest in this time that more people will come to know you than ever before because we're opening the doors of our churches and our ministries and our homes to those who need a place to belong. And they're looking for you. Um, help us to invite them in to share the good news and to share your love um, with anyone that we can. We just thank you so much for this day and for what you're doing in Kansas City and beyond. We trust you and we look to you as you continue to do a great work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, thanks so much for being Olivia, here. thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for what you do, for connecting people, uniting people. It is an honor to pray with you today. Well, yeah, we're looking forward to more connection <clears throat> as we go forward. We definitely will encourage our audience to join in on the uh, May 5th, where Portia and Pray KC and Caring for Kids is hosting at Macedonia mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. And then joining you the next day. And, and we'll keep it up. It fits so nicely with what we're trying to do, which we think that we can bring us a, a sustainability piece through the um, Bus Every Home app as people get their five neighbor names a day for which to pray. And then it's so beautiful to me that when we heard about what you guys were doing and I shared the idea with Chris Cooper about 
adding schools to the program, you know, that, that right away he recognized, yeah, we should be doing that. So that's part of the value of collaboration. You know, we get better because we learn from each other and we work together like this. So I'm excited for the way that our, our visions overlap and support each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. 